Yes, good morning. My name is Dr. Arimana Edouard Rodian. I'm the Honorable Commissioner for the Ministry of Physical Planning and Urban Development at Doe State in Nigeria. I'll be making a presentation titled Managing Public Facilities, the Edo Approach. Um, for introduction, facility management as a subset of general management is described by Bennett, 1994, as a management process which includes analytical and systematic approaches used to determine and deliver the agreed levels of service activities that are required to manage, operate, maintain, and support a facility in a quality environment at an appropriate cost to meet the business requirements. Furthermore, facility management therefore involves guiding and managing the operations and maintenance of buildings, precincts, and community infrastructure on behalf of property or facility owners to achieve a better output at a reduced cost, even with higher levels of professionalism. It's however been observed but by Bennett and other researchers that decisions as to requisite facility management services are often made intuitively without a thorough analysis of what is really needed and how it is needed. And most decisions are made much too late. That is when the building planning has already been finalized or even the building had been constructed. A fast and early decision-making process with regard to the service support required is however crucial to ensure that bottom, that to ensure that both the building and its services perfectly fit the cycle's costs and the user's comfort. comfort. In addition, facility management services need to consider an increasing variety of user groups, as it is predicted that in the future, the structure of tenants or users will vary even more than today, resulting in more diverse service needs for residential buildings. This was, uh, as uh, you know, discovered or uh, researched by Bush and Pierce in 2003. The same is true even in the perspective of Marin and Fanrich in 2007 for office buildings, considering the increasing flexibility of people's work schedules and blurring of the boundaries between work and private lives. The provision of the right services to a customer is therefore a crucial yet challenging task, which requires a structured facility management practice. In Edo State, the responsibility for developing and managing public buildings has also always been domiciled in the Ministry of Physical Planning and Urban Development. However, since the inception of the ministry in 2017, its scope and activities have witnessed rapid expansion as part of the reform approach of the ministry and with a view to focusing on master planning, urban development, and other related development services. Edo State Government has had to establish this agency for facility management, which is called the Edo State Infrastructure Asset Management Agency at Siama, which focuses the, on developing and managing public buildings and other state-owned physical infrastructure. In addition to buildings and other, uh, I mean, and other state-owned uh, physical infrastructure. In addition to institutionalizing a framework for the management of assets, its goal is to create a sustainable maintenance industry, economy, and culture in the state. So basically, we have had the Etiama, Edo State uh, Infrastructure Asset Management Agency, established in year 2020 by the, um, an executive order by the governor. The bill is presently before the House of Assembly. The um, Corona COVID-19 COVID uh, outbreak has actually created some delay in the full uh, operation of this agency. However, we have achieved um, certain 
um, milestones. So I'll be talking today about what we have achieved against what we still expect to achieve to ensure a sustainable management uh, of our public infrastructure. So looking at the agency, it's an independent body with its own administrative and technical structure that seeks to ensure the efficient and optimal performance of state-owned public infrastructure in and outside Edo State. The functions of Etsyama include to identify, to categorize and develop a database for existing public infrastructure structuring and outside of the state, to develop in consultation with other MDAs, ministries, departments, and agencies that are state-owned, a plan and need assessment for infrastructure delivery in the state to ensure quality standardization and longevity of assets by being a stakeholder in the conceptualization and construction phases of public infrastructure in and outside the state to provide project management services in the development of public infrastructure and in and outside of the state and finally to oversee the management and maintenance of public infrastructure within and outside the state. The key drivers um, that, uh, th that we have are that Edo State has found it expedient to institutionalize the management and maintenance of assets for um, the following reasons. First, to improve asset visibility, the state's asset visibility, its viability, tracking and control with a single global asset repository. Also, to evolve maintenance strategy from reactive modes, from, from the reactive approach in some cases, to a more proactive, well orchestrated, condition based maintenance that includes emergency response techniques. Also, to implement better planning and execution, scheduling and dispatching of, maintena of um, maintenance teams to critical locations, not under management. Why at Siama? Why do we actually need, just trying to further buttress the need for this agency at this point in time against what had happened in the past, against the government's approach in the past to maintenance of its uh, public buildings and infrastructure. And those states presently has invested a lot in the construction, remodeling, renovation, re rehabilitation of state-owned state public buildings and infrastructure within and outside the state. Some of these notable projects include, but are not limited to the Samuel Ogbemudia Stadium. We have 20 mini stadia across the 18 local governments in the state that are brand new. Um, we have uh, the Secretariat Complex where you have the Block B, Block D, Block D Annex, the Civic Center. We have uh, a Command and Control Center, Civil Service Training Center, Teachers Training College in Abudu, which is outside of the major city and many other projects that have just recently been either renovated or constructed. Also, the reason why we are setting up this agency, why we set up this agency in the state at this time is due to the level of decay and lack of maintenance of public buildings and facilities in the state over the years before now. And this is coupled with the attendant huge expenditure on public building construction and renovation in the last four years by the present administration. Therefore, a paradigm shift in the maintenance of in, is in the maintenance of public buildings and public facilities at this point is inevitable in order to ensure the sustainability and optimal performance of these public buildings. So at this point, we'll be looking at the strategy the state is uh, going to employ in achieving a sustainable management of our public facilities. A fundamental change in approach, as I earlier said, is required to gain significant traction on the delivery of the agency's core mandate. And to improve functionality and quality of infrastructure, as well as a, encourage a more sustainable maintenance industry, economy, and culture. A radical design of organizational structure for the various MDA, core operational processes and technology processes, technology and capacity is expedient to achieve dramatic improvements in asset performance, cost effectiveness, 
standardization and quality compliance in order to deliver better service to the asset users and custodians. A those states um, would be involved would, would um, employ a four pronged approach in order to achieve this. You could you, we, and this approach would be in four categories: the organizational structures of the MDAs as well as the agency would have to would have to visit the organizational structure, how these MDAs are structured, how the agency is also structured in order to you know better deliver on its mandate. Functions and operational processes, technology and systems, then capacity development and training. Within these, you have a variety of strategies. But in order to be more focused on the issue of sustainability as it relates to managing public facilities, I shall be um, focusing on advocacy, government public estates department as one of the major departments within the agency, maintenance implementation teams, maintenance call center, enterprise asset management software, training and upskilling, and finally, uh, financial plan. So I'll take these strategies one after the other and you know, elaborate on them. For advocacy, advocacy falls within the organizational structure um, process. And um, it comes to improving, when it comes to improving sustainability of infrastructure assets, many organizations in the past, even today, had focused on budgets and forget about the people, the users of these assets. From a culture perspective, the focus should include the people's mindset, promoting the importance of maintenance in educational institutions, public sector, and even the society at large cannot be overemphasized. This is what Edo stage through the agency will be foc focusing on in order to change the mindset of the users towards maintenance and sustainability. It's important to note that the effective, that effectively changing the behavior of people trickles down to the reliability of infrastructure. Also, setting new levels of accountability and enlightenment will help break old habits. Therefore, Edo State Management will ensure the following. Edo State uh, Government, through the facility management, sorry, will ensure the following. That the maintenance culture initiative aims to change the status quo in the operation, use, management, maintenance, and performance of infrastructure as a deliberate action to build capacity, create jobs, and ensure sustainability of all assets within and outside of the state. Um, also, that the vision of this agency is to establish an economy and culture of of maintenance to champion the benefits of good maintenance practice across the state. So it's important that there is enlightenment, there's advocacy to the users of facilities so that the feedback mechanism is enhanced. When people observe things that are not you know, functioning properly, they do not ignore, rather they report. And that informs the agency to take action proactively to attending to to these uh, facilities. So that's very important. It's an important component of the sustainable, sustainability approach that we intend to, to use. The second is the government public estate department. This function will manage the release of government assets through public private partnerships mechanisms. It will provide a range of services such as, but not limited to, Generating revenue by employing strategies aimed at retrieving redundant or seemingly redundant public assets. Promoting best practices in government estates management. Working with the private sector to unlock mutually benefiting models that will ensure optimal use and performance of state assets. Appraising proposals relating to public assets. 
relating to public asset redevelopment and utilization, delivering value added services to asset users, and finally, providing advisory services to ministries, departments, or agencies on issues relating to government estate. So the government public estate department will be a revenue generating department for the agency. And this is very crucial. This is important for the sustainability of our maintenance plan because we would require some revenue other than that provided for within the budget to actually ensure that prompt actions are taken where necessary in regards to maintenance of our, our public buildings. Also, we have maintenance imp implementation teams as another, as another strategy. Beyond outsourcing management of assets, there is need to develop an indigenous workforce by creating a well-equipped maintenance team or well-equipped maintenance teams that will respond or would have a 24-hour call-out service, that will give a 24-hour call-out service, that will respond promptly to, to, to calls, and that can efficiently attend to maintenance issues statewide. The teams would primarily focus on assets, not under maintenance contracts. Yes, it's not in every case that this team will be involved in maintenance. There are specialized facilities like our sports facilities, the stadium or the mini stadia that will require specialized maintenance contracts. The agency will ensure that proper contracting is done and very, very um, capable agencies are giving such, uh, or contractors are giving such contracts for maintenance. However, there are other public facilities that will require, you know, some level of, uh, maintenance or routine maintenance that these maintenance implementation teams will attend to. These smart teams will be trained, equipped with state-of-the-art power tools and mobile devices and swiftly deployed to locations that require immediate rehabilitation anywhere in a those state and at any time. An opportunity to key into, this also will give us an opportunity to key into the governor's, the state's um, agenda of creating jobs for its teaming youth, its teaming uh, population, and that will create that opportunity where many people who are trained would get more training, would be absorbed into the system, and you know will be used in this uh, teams to attend to maintenance uh, issues in public building. We also have, we also as another strategy, we'll be looking at the maintenance call center. The integrated structure asset management and maintenance war room will provide centralized command to coordinate efforts and dispatch resources. It will be a brain and nerve technology driven center equipped with dashboards to visualize the flow of information for critical and real-time decision making. The infrastructure management call center will provide a real-time single reporting platform that will enable maintenance implementation. The call center will integrate maintenance by ensuring prompt capture of issues, initiate investigations, record results, generate work orders with scheduling of manpower and support services. The call center personnel, the technical team, will be trained to ac accurately capture and classify issues, which will be automatically linked to relevant agencies, departments for such resolution. So basically, we would set up a call center, as I had said earlier, because of the um, COVID-19 outbreak, we are, we've not quite uh, achieved some of these uh, uh, objectives in establishing the agency. So this call center is what we expect to set up soon enough so that um, beyond the manual approach, approach would have it, you know, an online, online uh, automated, an online real-time approach to our maintenance, understanding the conditions of our buildings, taking an, a log, an inventory of uh, reported cases and following up on them to ensure that they are attended to. 
Also, we have the enterprise asset management software. We, we, the, the agency will, uh, is presently deploying a fixed asset model to deliver its ongoing asset accounting uh, valuation exercise. However, in order to optimize and extend the capabilities of the fixed asset model, the state is well positioned to implement an asset management software with the following features. Preventive and condition-based maintenance, work management planning and scheduling, integration with call center maintenance execution, contract management and support for maintenance teams via mobile maintenance, project management, real estate and property manager, as well as the command center. Those will be the features of the management software the agency will uh, deploy. Implementation of an enterprise asset management model will complement drive and, and drive maintenance best practices, as well as manage the full asset life cycle with a complete view of all asset classes. Through conceptualization, design, acquisition, construction, commissioning, utilization, or operation, maintenance, renewal, modification, and ultimate disposal of assets. Then we also have to look at the issue of training and upskilling. Um, we expect that the agency will um, employ best practice, and it's important that the staff and technic technical staff, as well as uh, administrative or whichever staff will be um, engaged in the agency, are trained with best um, to be able to cope with best practice. And the strategies highlighted above present a strong case for this upskilling of uh, the staff. Um, to this end, the Edo State has engaged the Facility Management Express Consulting Agency in collaboration with leading subject matter experts in the asset facility management industry to train its agency staff, office managers, and maintenance teams on new processes and technology. The trainings hold at agency locations, and presently we've had two trainings at uh, so far this year. You know, complying with uh, social distancing, you know, but we've been able to have at least two trainings. And um, the Edo State government staff, in the end, will be certified by international by the international body for facility management after such uh, trainings are concluded. Then finally, we'll be looking at uh, the financial plan for in order to achieve the sustainability of our uh, um, maintenance. Um, the state government, through the agency, began to make provision and budgetary provision, provisions for maintenance of its facilities across board from this year 2020. So within the state's budget, you have, you know, provisions, budgetary provisions for public facilities, public building maintenance through the agency. Other revenue sources for maintenance, however, will be will include but are not limited to. Uh, sources from the stadium, the Samuel Ogumilia Stadium and other sporting venues across the state in collaboration with the State Sports Commission and other stakeholders um, as they host local and international sporting events where gate takings and sponsorship deals will generate revenue for the state to make up for maintenance of these facilities. We also hope that the state government's assets in choice locations will be leased to generate revenue for the maintenance of you know, government uh, facilities and their operations. Then the minimum rent uh, charges. We have a civic center within the sectorial complex that has an event hall. We have uh, provisions for shops and other um, social um, activities where we expect that rents, even though small, will still come into the pool that will be used for maintenance of our public building. Considering the inputs from the government, and other public estate department and from the public uh, estate department, it's projected that at least between 30 to, 10, to 40 percent revenue of the capital required for the running of the agency will be generated through rentals and TPP arrangements yearly. In closing, the benefits of managing and maintaining a state government facilities and public buildings include but are not limited to the following. Unified and simplified administration of assets, 
where we are we are able to have a database on all assets and the condition of these assets at every point in time. Improved performance of asset means improved service delivery. So that's a benefit. There will be improved service delivery of the public service. Um, revenue generation for the state and employment generation opportunities as well for its citizens will be an advantage. Um, there will be increasing, there will be an increase in economic activities and ultimately the gross domestic product of the state. And in the end, um, a take home that might not be so tangible is the maintenance culture that would have been put in, that, you, that, that would have been inculcated in the people on how to, you know, treat and maintain government uh, assets, public assets. Thank you. <laughs>